Hey guys, Sean back with another video, and Angie J, possibly known for being the meanest, or one of the meanest contestants ever on My 600 Pound Life, at least that's what everyone keeps telling me whenever they're like, you have to see this episode, but uh, first I just want to say thanks for all the support, we were at like 9,000 subs back in June or July, and now we're at 85,000, which is just crazy, so I appreciate that, and uh, subscribe if you're new, but let's see what Angie J's got going on in her life. That's infected. The life I'm living right now is miserable because I have made myself a prisoner in a room inside of my home. I used to leave the house maybe once a week. Was that a cat paw print on her foot? Like, is she just trying to say, like, hey, I have nine lives because I got this big and I'm not dead yet? And once a week ain't that bad for 600 pounds. You really don't leave unless it's, like, a drive through a doctor, or a dentist, I guess, maybe, 3Ds. But now I'm mostly housebound because it's becoming harder to walk. My legs constantly hurt. So, my daughter Desiree helps me. Desiree! Can I lay down? Uh-oh. Desiree's a couple Doritos away from the doctor herself. I mean, uh... Sh I, I can't even say that. She's not big by my standard of big. She's just a little overweight by my standard, but my scale is drastically effed up. You guys know that. Good morning, beautiful. Good morning. I live with my husband, Justin, and my daughter, Desiree, along with her boyfriend, Will, and her daughter, my granddaughter, Daisy. And Damn, what are we running here? The hostess hostel? That's a lot of people in one house. A lot of generations, at least. I guess it's not that many people. Maybe the Hershey's hostel. And Desiree is my caretaker. She's my right hand. Is that a bear claw? You think she just likes the donuts a lot? Or you think she's just like mama bear or that she was going, I don't know what she's going for. And also who's peeing on your guy's floor? That thing's gross. Man, she's my best friend, but I feel bad for her. I do, I, she's you know, not supposed to be in this role yet, you know? Beautiful disaster. I think that's what that says. I didn't get a really, really good look or anything. They're supposed to take care of you when you get old. And I'm not that old, but I don't want my husband, Justin, to help me because I don't want him to cross over from being my husband to my caregiver. Come on, he's your husband. He's diddled your skittle. He can wash your flaps. Like, he's seen it before. It shouldn't be that big a deal. I think you'd be more embarrassed if your daughter was doing it, right? I don't want him to look at me differently because I feel ashamed of myself, of my body. My body looks like a nightmare, like a monster, something non-human. So I shower almost every day. Shower is exhausting. Washing in between my skin. Why is there so many jizz stains on that friggin' towel? Who had that under their bed? Was it your husband? Was he deprived and he, he, he painted that thing? What? A, that is disgusting. Folds is hard because it's heavy. It's hard to get all the way in there and it's a lot of lifting. That's what she said. It's overwhelming. Oh no, we cracked the tile. We got tile cracker tubby. That's, uh, that sucks. I remember when taking 10 minute shower in the morning and going about my day was <clears throat> fun. Ready? Mm hmm. Cool. Now it's and there's the most exhausting part of the day. She was on a shower seat, but also 10 minutes for a woman, I feel like it's very short. For guys, 10 minutes, nuts, butts, pits, whatever, we're good, we're out of there. You guys have so many extra steps that I could. If I had to shave my legs, I'd lose my damn mind. And 
when I'm done with that, I'm sore, I'm tired. I just usually go back and sit in my bed and wait to eat. I feel like a burden to Desiree because she takes care of me when she, she could be having a life of her own. Daisy Nana wants you. Oh, cute kid. My granddaughter, Daisy, is one of the most important things in my life. But I miss out on a lot in Daisy's life because of my weight. I'm a bed grandma. You're not going to be able to keep up with kids. That's why the other guy that was a teacher, I was like, I really don't see how that's going to work because there's no way he can chase around all those kids. But I imagine your granddaughter's like, come play with me, and you're just like, bring it to the bed or whatever. To her. I hate using the word handicap, but I can't even get myself out of bed. Desiree does all the cooking now. I... Looks like Chef Boyardee does all the cooking. That's all canned fresh, but uh, maybe Chef Mike. I call it Chef Mike when you use the microwave. Used to be the, the cooker, and then we used to share it, and now it's pretty much she cooks all the time. Is something burning? No. For you guys? You guys need to turn the uh, heat down, Desiree, on the stove. The heat's on five for the bacon something that's probably your arteries uh actually yeah no those eggs are getting a little burnt you need if you overcook eggs you got to take them out so much earlier than most people think i get very frustrated with my mother sometimes because i take care of my own three-year-old at the same time and it gets to be a bit much but i would never turn my back on her i will be here because I know that she needs me. Here comes the biscuit bear, and this guy's skinny as hell, too. She's got bra straps thicker than him. How much gravy's on there? I'm gonna call her Gravy Gandalf the rest of this thing. I sit on the sideline for everything, and by the time it's time to eat, I'm starving. I wanna eat. Food is the only thing that helps me deal with the misery of my life, and I constantly need it because I constantly need to escape. So we have to keep a lot of food in the house at all times. That's not a weight thing. It's a doomsday prepper thing. She's just prepping for the end of the world and they've got to have sausage gravy if the world ends. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not an eating absorbent, whatever, a, a lot of food. And I have to have what I want. I don't know. So if we ever run out of anything, then Desiree needs to go to the store. Because I can't do it for myself. You ready? Yeah. Here's the grocery list. Oh, I wanted to read it. We got Desiree DoorDash on the go, man. That must be pretty damn convenient. Also, this lady's got a lot of butterflies. I thought, like, I really hate the butterfly, man. I hate it as a tattoo. I don't hate butterflies. I think every chick has the tattoo. Love you. I look forward to eating throughout the day. It's a breakup in my boredom. And one of my brothers, Lee, will sometimes stop by and bring me food. That's Lee, probably. When you get the door. Yes. The word family to me means people that you can call when you need something, when you have no time at all, you make time for them. I did it today. For him. Here comes Lymphedema Lee with all the extra salt and tacos and stuff. Why would you bring her more food, man? I'd never understand why people do this. My sister Angela went and got her tacos because I love her and I want her to be happy. Growing up in my family, I couldn't ever picture my life to be like it is right now. When I was a child, my life was hard. Oh, I hate when they do this part. It's always so sad. Then I gotta feel bad. I can't joke as much. My mom was an alcoholic and my father was a drug addict. And my father was abusive physically to my mother. So Damn. I felt abandoned most of the time because of my parents. 
She's got a fly on her hoo-ha. But, I mean, I could imagine that maybe she's not as mean as everyone says. Maybe she's just got her guard up because she's had a messed up past or something. It's alcohol, drug abuse, and neglect. They just weren't present. And when I was eight years old, I was used by a family friend. When I finally came out about it, my mom didn't defend me, so... That's despicable. I don't know why your mother wouldn't defend you in that. I can't think of anyone that's ever so much as looked at me the wrong way that my mom didn't rip their head off when I was a little kid. I felt unprotected by people who were supposed to protect me. It was at that point that I started eating more. Food was a good comfort because it was always there, and it was something I are they also rubbing those balloons on the dogs, get the static electricity and just sticking them there? That's kind of funny, actually. I could control when everything else in my life was uncontrollable. And by the time I was 13, I weighed 260 pounds. When I was 13, I was in my first major relationship with a 27-year-old man, and I ended up... What the hell? 13? I was still going to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments trying to let nobody from my school catch me so they didn't know I was a closet nerd. A pregnant. Six months after my son TJ was born, I gave him up for adoption and my relationship with his father ended due to abuse. I'm hoping it ended because he went the hell to jail. Jail vacation, let's send him there. But she kept her son, what'd she say, six months and then gave him up? That probably was that much tougher, but a 13-year-old has no business with a kid. And I was still turning to the one thing that was familiar, and that was food. So when I was 16 years old, I weighed around 300 pounds, and I met my... She's slow playing it a little bit here. She's not quite cooking it. We're used to at 600-pound life, but she's getting up there. Also, who brings nachos, like, to travel? It's not a traveling food. My first husband, James. I became pregnant with my daughter, Desiree, at 17. When did they invent the condom? Like, at what point did this happen? Because I know there's places you can get them for free. I know, because I walked into Planned Parenthood one time, picked up their bin of them, and carried them out while they were yelling at me. I know you can do it. I was like 16. James became abusive when we found out I was pregnant with Desiree. When Desiree was just a newborn, we were evicted. We needed a place to go, and my dad took us in, and that's when I reunited with my dad. At 18, I weighed 340 pounds, and I went to jail for complicity to burglary. They have junk food jail? Damn, I'm surprised they didn't catch me. I must have had a warrant out for me. Complicity to burglary. She was a getaway driver then, I think. I was sentenced two years. I only went for eight months. But while I was in jail, my husband, James, was incarcerated with a 10-year sentence. Desi went to my dad when I went to prison. So when I got... Pretty much, he, like, robbed somebody, whatever, and then she was the getaway driver is what it sounds like. I got out. I didn't have a place to live, so I lived with them. I didn't gain no weight in jail, so at... I'd be shocked if you did, honestly, unless you were bullying everybody on the block for their honey buns, and not those kind of honey buns, like the commissary ones. 20 years old, I weighed 340 pounds, met someone, and got pregnant with my second daughter, third child, Haley. I had Haley. We're going to have to buy this lady a chastity belt. There's no stopping her. She's just, the second she's out of jail, she's getting back shots from somebody. And we're ending up with a baby. Like, it's unstoppable. Until she was two. And that's when I went back to prison for the second time. Probation violation. Same charge. And her grandparents got her and kept her. When I was 26 years old, I was released from prison. I weighed 420 pounds. But at that time, my weight started to plateau because I became addicted to drugs for about. Wait, you did six years for a parole violation? Is it usually that long or is she lying to us like she did something else? 
10 years. And the next few years were a bit of a blur. And then when I was 32 years old, I injured my knee and it was the worst thing and the best thing that happened in my life. It was Join the club, lady. None of us have good knees. Mine sounds like a creaky door hinge. I've had arthritis in it since I was 13. You're lucky you made it to 32 before you felt it at your weight. It was the best thing because I got sober and it was the worst thing because I became immobile. I was drinking and my leg hyperextended backwards, causing some damage to my knee. I was pulled out of a house on a tarp like I was an animal by fire. If you don't want to get on the tubby tarp, have the Hershey's hubby stay the hell away. He just brought you a bowl that didn't even look like it was half ice cream. It's mostly Hershey's. Men, paramedics, and anybody else that would help that wasn't drunk. When I arrived at the hospital, that's when I seen my weight for the first time in a few years. And it was 505 pounds. That's when it became... Sounds about right. We usually pretend scales don't exist. They're like a mythical animal, like a dragon. Like, scales just don't exist to us. I think I went 11 years without weighing myself at one point. And then I went another five after that, after I saw it once. Real. What I had let my body become. I needed an MRI, but I was too heavy for the MRI table. So the hospital referred me to a rehabilitation center with no diagnosis. That's a lie. I was heavier than her when I went to my open MRI. I almost got stuck in the damn thing, even though it said open. It wasn't very open. But, yeah, she could have got... I'm sure she could have. I don't know. Maybe she's too short and too round. When I went into the rehab center for 90 days, I got clean. When I got out, I was like, I'm on a straight path. I'm going to stay on it. But I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't go back to my parents. I had to go live in a handicap accessible place. Also, if you look at her uh, CPAP in the corner or whatever, that thing's disgusting. You have to clean those tubes so much more because bacteria grows in them. It gets really gross. You know, and Desiree stayed with my parents because she was in school. I kind of shut down. I was depressed. I dealt with it with food, and I just kept gaining. When I was 34, Desiree moved in with me and started to take care of me. At 37 years old, I weighed about 580 pounds, and I met my current husband, Justin. Where'd you meet him? Christian Mingle? Yeah, that looks like a Christian Mingle like photo shoot right there. I was on a dating site, and I got a message. Told you. And it just so happened to be three days prior to losing my father. And because Justin's lost his father, we became friends immediately. RIP to your dad, but this guy looks like he is 100% railing you for a roof. He is giving you the futon D, like that's what he's looking for. He's looking for a dwelling. So, I mean, that's probably where we're at on this guy. When I met Angela for the first time, I was attracted because of her personality, her heart, just the person she was. Thought we was gonna be friends. I didn't ever think we would be married. Things went on, and here we are, a year later, married. And now I'm 39 years old. I'm still currently married. I don't know how much I weigh. Currently married is a wild way to say it. It's only been two years. Like I don't even think you've had enough time to be separated long enough to be divorced hardly yet. But I'm probably over 600 pounds. You and. Are. I know that I'm at a very bad place in my weight right now and that I have to get help. But the problem is there are almost no options out there for people like me. So I called Dr. Now a few days ago and I got an appointment for next week. And people always say that. I'm convinced there's a surgeon in every state that will work with you. You're more high risk, so I'm sure there are ones that'll turn you down, but I'm almost positive she could have found somebody in Ohio. And I've been talking to my family about the idea of all of us moving to try and get the help I need. Justin said he'd do it for me. The only one who isn't sure yet is Desiree. Mostly because her boyfriend, Will, doesn't want to do it. But I have to keep pushing it with her because I have to have an answer. So when she 
I don't, you don't, I mean, if he's going with you, why, you don't need her too. He could just take over her duties. Unless she's just that obsessed with being in control and everybody doing exactly what she wants at this point. She gets done with errands and getting the groceries. I'm going to try to talk to her again. Because there's no more time for her to stay on the fence about it. Then honestly, I think siding with her mother and saving me would be the obvious choice. That's right. Everything. Can't we pick the kids or maybe the boyfriend? She she doesn't have to be loyal to you. It don't sound like you were loyal to her most of her life. So I need to know if you're on board with going to Houston because your boyfriend is giving me about it. What do you do? So I think that he's mad from the other day when there was a conversation that if I was to look for a doctor in another area, he insinuated he didn't even want to come to Houston so I can get the help I need. So all I said was, how about get a life? And he jumps up, runs his mouth, comes up, says I'm a I know you Australians are laughing right now because that's not a bad word to you. But to us, it's like the most disrespectful thing you can say to a woman. Uh, it's pretty up there. Maybe not most disrespectful. You think that's normal? Well, and I said, we're and all I doing said this why don't you get a life? He said, we're all doing and this And we're all for doing you. this for you, Angela. So he's not going to be living here. They literally are doing everything for her. Like, she is in complete control. She knows exactly what she's doing and saying. And she is just, like, running that household. So you want me to leave my boyfriend, move to Texas, and be okay with that? Oh, here we go. Dramas. Right. I mean, how am I being like Your dramatic? boyfriend's not going to be dramatic and call me a dinner and I, I, I haven't even got time to address anything. I've been... Yeah, this is what I knew was going to happen. I'm not... I think there's nothing but time in that household. It looks like all of you have nothing but time because no one's left to do anything during the day yet except for you to go to the grocery store. I am tired anything. of every single time a little thing is said around here, your dramatic boyfriend gets escalated to up here. So then this I'm, little in the, words, I'm in the position to pick between my that mother be a, or my boyfriend and my child. No, your child would still be here without I mean, your boyfriend, just like the other even, one that's, was. That's not right. Well, you do whatever Especially you want to do. Especially when you know that I'm going to pick you. Okay. It's never about me. It's never been about me. Ever. You guys have lived with me forever. I take care of you. I ask for one thing. It's a big ask. You're literally asking them to uproot their life, move from Ohio to Texas, while you're sitting there screaming about dramas and all this and that. Just because the boyfriend called you a name, you can't take it, but you can give it that much. It's kind of sad. One thing. It's not my fault. Will it, said it can't be something simple i can't rely okay. on nobody but everybody I'm relies on me i'm, not I'm tired i'm tired i'm not saying what are you tired from the shower you're still tired from that take a nap I'm this not is stupid i've been on board since day one mm, yeah so you can yeah you were on board before too and because of daisy you didn't go and now I don't and now have here we are again here. except for you're knocked up again she's oh well, I thought he was the father of the other kid. That kid? Damn. That's That makes this a little more interesting, a little more understanding why she's so worked up. Yeah. I can't believe this is happening. For me to have to convince my daughter to do this, to save her mother, you're pregnant. You did not just go out there. pregnant. I know pregnant women that wouldn't even take an ibuprofen while they were pregnant. But you're going to go smoke a cigarette? That's crazy. There's life. Just doesn't make sense to me. And I'm really hurt by that. Because if I don't find a way to be able to do this, then the only option I have left is to give up and just wait to die. I don't know why people think that's the only option, but I, I, the only thing I can figure is it's because we see the surgery as the only fix and there's like no other choice at all. So you have to have the surgery, but it's not going to do it all for you. She's going to have to do a lot for herself. Dude, I cannot physically do this. I cannot mentally do this. I really can't. If that's what you want to do, then go ahead, dude. I am not telling 
I don't think that car can physically do what you guys are asking. That's like got to be max weight load on that thing, though. It's squatting probably pretty low. Can you leave? Get out of my face! I'm real upset at Desiree and her boyfriend, Will, and my whole situation. I've decided to try to get help, and I want my family and me to move to Houston so I can do that by seeing Dr. I'm upset with you because it's like you're picking fights. You're poking, poking, poking just so you can see the chaos and the storm you cause because you're stuck in the bed so you need some form of entertainment. After now and trying to get weight loss surgery. But I can't believe I'm having to fight my own daughter to support me and do this to help save my life. I even have to ask her to choose between what her... Oh, there's Willie Will shooting up the club, but uh... He kind of looks like a young Manson, huh? He also looks like he's just totally given up on life. He's got one of those stares that's like, I can't believe this is where my life has led me. Or actually, he kind of looks like a kind of nasty guy who cranks one out and then sticks his hands in a family bag of chips. And I just psychoanalyzed the hell out of him, and I've only had Psychology 101 in community college, and I dropped out. Her boyfriend wants, and what her mother needs to live. She's going to cost me my life. I need to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Because your boyfriend was a to me and I reacted in the way any normal person would? No, I'm not saying that it was anywhere near okay for him to speak to you like that. And Kristen, I wouldn't why are speak you crying? Him. I'm emotional. Okay. <laughs> Damn, this lady's cold. I don't know if jail did it to her or what, or just her past. She doesn't seem to care at all if her daughter's upset. So, what's the problem? You're upset because you know that I'm not going to let Will stay here. That's what you're upset about? Yeah. Why? Because he's the father of my child and okay. we're together. Okay, so... And you want me to move 19 hours okay, away. Okay, we're not... That's not a topic right now. He's a pretty tiny guy. I think we could fit him possibly in the trunk and then just like, surprise, we're in Houston. And then she's kind of stuck with him because nobody's going to take him back. We're talking about your boyfriend disrespecting me, period. And this isn't the first time. It's not okay for him to talk to you like that. I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying that I'm choosing him over you. I'm saying I'm choosing you over him and, that, and it hurts me. It's not... I would like to see you choose your baby over cigarettes, but that's just me. It's supposed to hurt me. That's like me saying it's me or Justin. And I wouldn't even drop a tear for that decision. Damn, Justin, you're worth about as much as a jelly bean. They pawn your ass for 20 bucks like a pair of old ice skates or something. You don't have any kind of hierarchy in this house. You're like at the very bottom. But... I don't know how this is going to be resolved in five minutes. Yeah, I don't either. So we're going to go to Sarah's for the night so everybody can cool down and we'll be home tomorrow. And I know she's thinking right now, Sarah Lee, you didn't get one of those at the groceries? No, I'm playing. I'll talk to you. Come here. Come here. We could be healthy as a horse and still die the next day. You never know. No one's problems tomorrow. I don't know. That horse is probably on its way to the glue factory at this point. She's getting up there, and she don't look like she's the healthiest. She also is just kind of nasty, and that can't be good for your blood pressure or your heart or anything. So I always make sure that we resolve conflicts and let each other know that we love each other at the end of the day. That's a big thing for me because I certainly don't want her to pass us away and our last words to be something foul. Good idea. I always say I love you to my parents or something when I see them and leave the house or anything. You're hot. None of us You're like the situation. I mean, I assume that it's hard for Desiree to have to be put in a position where she possibly has to choose between her mom and her soon to be born baby's dad. It would be funny if Justin popped in and said, at least something's hard around here. Yeah, but... I feel bad for her. I do. Because Will's not good enough for her. I don't want her to feel like she does with Daisy. With no father. I mean, she wants to keep this baby against all better judgment. I have never heard a grandmother 
say that she wants to keep... Like, usually the grandmothers are like, yes, they want grandkids that bad. But I did the same thing. So I get it. And I want Will to step up and be... Come on, nicotine nympho. You... <sighs> Good look with the cigarettes, the prank uh oh, will. Everything that she wants or thinks that he is. Food is the only thing that helps me deal with all the stuff like this. And the things I don't want to have to deal with. I wish I hadn't let things get this bad, but food helps you deal with when your daughter's boyfriend calls you a name. That's just... You would have had the damn food either way. Let's be real. They are. And I know I have to do something now. And if I don't, I'm just not going to be alive much longer. True. You got one foot in the grave and the other on that big, massive wad of Velveeta shells. So, uh, it's a slippery slope, but the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. So you're not, like, done for. Oh, are you comfortable? It sure is. All right, so <coughs> plan. Well, me and Desiree already kind of have a little bit of a plan. I'm going to find out a store for you. You can go to the store. Well, you better make sure it's close to here because I'm not getting lost in here. DoorDash Desiree just got promoted. Now you are junk food Justin out the damn door. I ain't seen nothing close. Okay. First of all, you can go cussing at me. I mean, that's that's at where you. we can start at. You I can go cuss cussing at, at me. Um, secondly, I'm going to Google for a store, and you're going to go to the store. Uh, if it's not close, I'm not going. What are we supposed to eat? Uh, so what the f are store you, so Einstein? I can see how far it is and where I got to go. No, it's your point of your You better tell her to look at the lo like closest pizza joint or whatever and get some delivery, or tell her to pop a wheelie to Wegmans. Like, that's going to be on her, because she's talking down to him a lot. Attitude. You've had an attitude since we left home. And you can go back home and I have my brother come here. Believe that. You can sub people out on a 20-hour road trip? That's crazy. Ask him to drive all the way there just so you could trade out the husband? But how to, and just, get your and go to your mama's house because I'm sick of your attitude. I don't want you and I don't need you. This woman... It, I was trying to give her as much of a pass as I can because... I understand that she's got her guard up with everyone, but she is just spitting. Like, she's straight vile to everyone around her. I guess I'm seeing maybe this isn't something he really wants to do. Because he's had an attitude since we left the house. He probably really doesn't even want to be doing this trip, but he holds it in and then it all comes out over some stupid, like, a store trip. I mean, the guy's gonna go homeless over hash browns, so I very much doubt that he wants to be stuck with you in a hotel room right now. I knew this was gonna happen. I knew it. You knew what was gonna happen, though? You. You're pathetic. You. Uh, because I don't want to drive pathetic. to a store that I you're don't... Pathetic. I'm in a city you're I don't pathetic. know... The you're getting piped out by pathetic, so what's that say about you, sweetheart? <laughs> you want me to pathetic. drive you're around pathetic. You're pathetic. to stores, but that's pathetic because I don't want to get lost. Loser, you shouldn't even be around me anyways. That's how you are. Is loser, freaking put on a show for people. Yeah, you're I'm fake as in my mouth. No, you are. No, you're a fake piece of. Cause I don't want to go to a store that I don't know uh, about. Whatever. I don't know where you're going, but you're getting up out of this room. This room's in my name. Um, it, that'll be changed real quick, guy. Damn, he finally had a, I like the fact that he's finally speaking up for himself, but she is gonna throw his ass out. He's pretty much done at this point. There's something going on, something more. I don't know what it is. I think he's having dope fits, if you ask me. My daughter's the one that assists me through everything. He doesn't do anything. I don't know, he's just there. That's my support group, my daughter. Why would we assume dope fits? Did she say that he was the addict too? Did I miss that? He's just convenient right now because he's driving. He's not my support group. I'm going forward with or without him, and he knows that. Whether we get a divorce, whether we split up, I, he doesn't really have much choice. We're getting a divorce because he didn't go to a damn grocery store? That's your line in the sand? You didn't get me snacks, so you're the hell up out of here? That's crazy. I'm nervous. Dr. Now won't accept me as his patient because I'm too heavy. 
And I'm scared of... Doctor now has, like, rescued Volkswagen Beetles before. Like, half a ton cars. Like, he gets up there. I don't think you're quite that big yet, lady. I'm finding out what my weight really is. If I'm 600 pounds, I'd probably be very upset. Because I've never seen that number before. That look, might be a little closer to seven, but when you see it for the first time, it hurts your soul a little bit. If she has one. Uh oh. Quit being sp spaghetti arms when I need you. You expect this guy to curl 643? He weighs 100 pounds soaking wet. I'm not. It's a lot, and it just became real. I just realized that I'm 39 years old, and that amount of weight, I'm worried that I'm not going to have enough time to get rid of it. It's a slap in the face. She has enough time. She still can turn it around, but she's getting towards the end of where I would say, like, it's going to be a lot tougher going forward for her. So she really needs to turn it around here. And then Justin can carry her through the threshold since he's spaghetti arms. You are a 39-year-old and 5'5 and 643 pounds. Damn, her BMI's got to be up there, like an NBA score up there. So are you able to be active? No, not really. Why well, I, I injured my knee in 2011, so my knee gives out, pops out of place, it's grinding. Look, we will use, like, excuses like, my knee hurts, this and that, to not do things. You're going to have to push through that pain because it's not going to go away. It's effed up already. You got too big, it's going to hurt. Mine hurts, you just have to push through it. Bone on bone now. Okay, well, the best thing to help your knee will be to lose weight. I figured that. I know I have to lose weight to get to fix my knee. Well, if you figure that then, what's holding you up so far to lose weight? Doctor now out here spitting facts today. He don't give a damn. He always tells it like it is, and I think that's why I like him so much. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I feel like I if I can't move, I can't lose weight. <laughs> no, that's completely inaccurate. The reason you overweight is you eat too much. So, what is going on with your eating habit? Because in order for you to... Are we going to blame it on Justin, the junk food junkie? Like, is that where we're heading here? Because she seems to love to push the blame off onto other people. That just seems like her style. To maintain your weight at 643 pounds, you're eating at least six to 7,000 calories a day. And if you're gaining, it's even more than that. Okay. Okay. So, what is driving you to eat like that? Are you hungry? Is it habit? Stress? I don't think I eat when I'm bored. So you're kidding yourself for entertainment to avoid boredom? Well, probably not. You don't think this level of pattern? You do tend to eat when you're bored. You tend to eat when you're happy. You tend to eat when you're sad. You tend to eat when you want to eat. Just because what the hell else are you doing? You're laying in bed watching youtube like you guys are sitting here watching right now there's not anything going on there's nothing for you to do maybe once in a while you sit there and hop i ain't even gonna say what you do but once in a while you know something might happen that's a little more exhilarating than eclairs but all right what's kind of eating you have has anything to do with things like your emotions I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm an emotional eater because I don't think that I am. I eat at bad times. I don't eat during the morning and afternoon because I drink coffee, which suppresses my appetite. I eat at night, and then I go to bed. I eat a lot at night because I'm hungry from not eating all day, and then I overeat. The only I could... Lady, I just watched you friggin' go vampire mode on some Velveeta or whatever, pound a bunch of burgers traumatized some taco bell like you went to town lady i didn't see any boredom eating there i just saw a whole lot of eating and if you're eating from boredom, you better tell justin to hop up to get the rollo rodeo going on he better do something with that little thing the thing you said was that you eat a lot but what you're leaving out is that it's all day long so don't have to convince me you're just eating once a day because i'm not buying it okay but if you have trouble getting it on then who brings you the food my husband and her does. Okay. 
it seems your weight gain is affecting your daughter. So there is a mutual benefit because your daughter. Oh no. If you're sitting in the room and you're the other person and Dr. Dow goes, huh, do you want to get in the program too? How do you feel about that? I feel like you see her and you think, oh, I'm kind of normal weight. I bet she don't think she's that big just because looking at her mom, she's big, right? So I bet she don't think she's that bad yet. This is also some weight problem, huh? Yeah. So she brings you unhealthy food. She can eat it too. Yeah. All right. She eats the same food as me, so I'm worried. I tell her all the time, when you get to this age, it's harder to lose weight and you're a lot more things are going to happen because I was her weight when I, I was actually a little lighter than her when I was her age, to be honest. She's also pregnant from Wank and Willie, right? That was her boyfriend's name. So I, she's going to put on more weight. So this is a bad situation going on here. And it's here now. I tell her all the time. It's going to happen if it doesn't change. And she's pregnant. So it's going to make her weight gain even worse. And on top Mazel of that, tov. she smokes too. We all oh. Pregnant lady doesn't smoke as much as pregnant this lady is, This used is to the smoke. most dangerous thing for your child. I know. Mother smoking. You have to stop that immediately. Do you got that? All right. Good. Um. Look, I've known people who do... I don't even want to say this. I've seen when babies come out dependent on certain things before because I've seen ex like that happen and my mom actually took care of a baby for a little time that came out very addicted to a certain substance and it was the most awful thing i've ever seen in my life screaming their head off for days on end like it was terrible so i don't think you should do anything like that to your kids ever smoking while you're pregnant pretty disgusting to me back to your eating habits just is enabling you but he is not the old way so let's talk about his eating habit um, he eats more than both of us he eats more than both of you. Absolutely. That's physically impossible. So we got some serious issues with delusion with you all. all right. I love when Dr. Now calls out people's stuff, man. Because look at Justin. He's so happy right now. He's like, heh, heh, heh. You jack in the box. Like, he just, she's so annoying and she's so on him all the time. When somebody puts her in his place, I bet that is like the greatest thing that's ever happened to him in his life because he's too beta to talk back to her. I mean, he definitely eats more than I do. I probably he eat has a eight, high metabolism. Eight to 10,000 calories a day. And you can lie on you one, but this is all science and math. And it's a big part of the problem we're facing here is that you seem like a master manipulator who thinks she can just decide what the facts are she wants to believe and just tell everyone else what to think. So if you're here to just play games, then this is not going to end well for you because you realize that this is a dangerous situation when you're 39 and you are 643 pounds. If you're going to master something, it's going to have to be manipulation. She can't get up out of bed. She's going to have to find a way to get people to give her what she wants. So she's going to do that through like, oh, starting little fights here or there, picking arguments with people like she did with the daughter. Like, she's going to have a workaround for everything. She picks fights with Justin. She throws around the divorce word. Like, she's this. She's toxic as hell, man. This lady just looks like she'll rip your head off right now for any reason. So, at this point, you're going to have to decide whether you want to do this or if you plan to just keep doing things like you have been, hoping your situation somehow magically gets better. Because the reality is, it's not. Unless you start making the changes you need immediately. Okay. So I'm going to give you a 1,200 calorie a day, high protein, low carb diet that you need to start today. Okay. And you're going to... That's a, freak. That's a strict diet, man. I think that would be hard for just about anybody. But if she actually wants to save her life, be there for her grandkids, she's going to have to kind of like buckle down it's hard at first to even get your mindset right I'm, i don't think she's gonna do it just from seeing the way she is the way she acts stick with that and if you do that you're gonna be able to lose 50 pounds in one month okay okay and if you hit that goal by then i'll approve you for weight loss surgery so if i eat healthy the 1200 stick to everything you give me I'll lose weight even if I can't really get up and exercise around and dance around. Yes, but you can. 
Bedroom cardio, lady. What the hell do you think your husband's for? We're built for that kind of stuff. You can exercise. You can exercise in yeah, your arms. Yeah, I do. Arm, and you can mm -hmm. do your leg exercise. You can exercise in the bed. Okay. You can lift up your leg. So we're going to give you something to do every day. One hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon. Dr. Now's going to give you a bedroom workout. You lucky lady, you. Look at that. This man's a stud. You work on your muscles. So you think you can do that? Absolutely. But here's the thing. Um, coming here next month, um, well, I was just kind of hoping that I'm going to be in your program because, so that I can just go ahead and continue with my plans of leaving and coming here. You better start pounding some protein then because Dr. Now don't tell anybody to move until he's pretty sure that they're good and set and ready to stick with this. If you want to do my program, you're going to have to be here in Houston. So you can move down to Houston anytime you want to. Okay. But until you show me you're willing to take this first step and put forth some effort, there's no guarantee you're going to be part of the program. So that's the risk you take. And what we do from here all depends on you. I know. So lose the weight you need if you want to do this program. You think you can do that? Yeah. I like the fact that he's not selling anybody the dream. Dr. Now is pretty realistic because it's hard. When you think something's going to go one way, and at this point, you just don't realize how much work is in it for you because everyone thinks it's the easy way out, which myself included, I thought it was the easy way out. You don't realize just how much comes with it, how much like authorizations you need, what's going to happen after, how hard it is going to be to stay hydrated, how hard it is to fight at the acid reflux after the fact. Like there's just so many complications so many nights i woke up like choking on my own vomit from eating the wrong stuff like it comes with its own battles that's for sure yes any questions no all right i'll see you when you all get down back to houston i'll see you soon. all right since we've been back from dr now's me and my family have been trying to adjust to all the changes that we need they won't let you smoke those cigarettes in the program. My surgery got canceled for that one, too. I had to give up my Newport 100s. They said it was something about healing and nicotine. I'm not quite sure. While also trying to figure out how to move to Houston. The deal that me and Desiree made was we'd see if Dr. Nob was going to help me. And if he was, we agreed we all moved to Houston, no matter what her boyfriend will wants. But it just seems like no one's happy or on board anymore. So it feels like... That looks like one of those little, like, pre-made frozen chicken breasts. They're pretty good, actually, but I prefer them in the air fryer. They stay moist, but that don't look bad at all. Like, everyone is turning against me. But I told them all, as far as I'm concerned, it's a done deal. We're moving to Houston, and that's all there is to it. And until then, I've got to lose weight. So while the family all eats the same junk I want to eat, we're making special meals for me that follow Dr. Now's diet. And I feel like it's making a difference because... Is grape drink on the diet, though? I don't think so. Do they make diet grape drink? I, I don't know. I feel better even though I'm starving a lot. Do you see how much mac and cheese they gave that little girl? It's more than they've got. That little girl's gonna have a weight problem, too, eventually. Chicken looks pretty. Thank you. But, um, anyways, I'm worried I'm gonna go into his appointment with the doctor and not lose that 50 pounds, and he's gonna, like, get smart with me, and then I'm gonna cuss him out. No, oh, don't cuss him out. No, I'm not. Because I know I need to come there. I mean, um... Yeah, it's not really, like, ideal living situation, but even if we have to, like, take one bedroom right now, I can sleep in the living room. Oh, no. The hostess hostel, like, going to one bedroom? That would be a nightmare. With all those people? Also, that thing's swimming and dressing. I don't know how many calories Italian dressing is. I never really ate it, but I don't think she's going to lose weight if that's the way she's going about it and give you guys the bedroom until Will gets a job down there and we can afford something bigger just to get us there. 
Because the thought of packing me, Daisy, and Will, and a newborn baby into one room is stressful. Well, you don't have to do anything, but I appreciate that you're doing it for me. She just hated Will like 10 seconds ago. And now it's, well, we need Will to find a job, so we'll be set in Houston. Her mind just changes left and right. Like, she is just chaos embodied. Doing it for all of us. This hasn't been easy at all, and some days it feels like torture. My whole life is depending on getting all this figured out. The diet, exercise, moving my family down, all of it. And that's a lot at once. So I feel like there's so much pressure on me right now. So this is rough, but I have to do this and I have to keep my family on board too. At the rate she's been going, the amount of fights she picks with people, I don't see any way that you could move to a different state with her, be isolated and have to deal with that 24 seven and not lose your damn mind dealing with this lady. Granted, she has a traumatic past, so you should give her a pass on some of it, but eventually you gotta start, like, start doing something about your weight and stop taking it out on other people. My life is all over the place right now. Justin is no longer here. We have separated. About a week ago, we got into an argument. He was under the influence as usual, and he packed his things up and left. It Damn, Justin got evicted. I, I hate to say I saw this one coming, Justin, but your position in this family was pretty apparent when she said that you didn't even have a choice. Like, you would get the boot long before the daughter, which I guess it should be that way, but you weren't that damn important, buddy. You can get up out of here in a heartbeat. And then he comes in there messed up, and she, she kind of looks like she might be a little bit, I don't know. It was a stupid fight he created because he didn't want to go to Texas. And the whole time he knew he didn't want to go, but he never said that. Be careful. Uh oh, where did the chicken breast go? We went to chicken nuggies and onion rings? Doctor, now I ain't gonna like this very damn much. Onion rings. Oh, it's so hot. Careful, yeah, you're gonna burn your mouth. Ah, hot. He had me convinced that he was this great guy. What do you mean? Dude was railing you for a roof. I think a blind man could have seen that. Like, it was very apparent when he didn't do anything at all during the day except bring you more food, make you bigger, and make it so you depended on him to an extent. So, I don't know what to do. Because the only thing that's getting me through all this right now is food. But I'm trying to stick to the diet as much as I can, even though it's hard. She says that with grease dripping down her chin, like, no, you're not, lady. No, you're freaking not. I'm just having moments where I have to have something that's not on the diet. Something that tastes really good. And I'm scared because I don't know how I'm going to get to Houston and do this now. I'm supposed to be back for my follow-up appointment with Dr. Now in two days. Uh-oh, we got some distance to travel, lady. We better do some hefty hitchhiking real quick, because if Justin ain't driving, we gotta get a we better get a move on. You better start hopping some railroad trails or something. Jump on the train, do the hobo lifestyle like your ex-husband. I'm not gonna make it because without Justin, I can't do this. I feel a lot of feelings about it, but mostly I feel betrayed. And I have no idea how to fix this or what to do. You probably don't do it by finagling a bunch of french fries and onion rings, but let's... <sighs> I get why Justin got the boot, but she's dependent on him, and now she's just going to use that as a reason for her to eat more. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in on it, and she's like, Justin, you got to go. I need some junk food, and I need a reason. Three months since my appointment with Dr. Now. 
and I was supposed to be back down to see him for my follow-up a couple months ago. But with my husband leaving me, now I'm on my own. Like, everything is on my shoulders. And uh, moving to Houston has been difficult or challenging. Finding a place there is not that easy from here. And the desert... Baby, come back. I'll do anything. Bring a baconator to me. His due date is in a couple months. And that's just another thing. That's making figuring out any plans to do this even harder. But I don't want Doctor Now to give up on me. So I'm talking to him today. And I'm hoping he's understanding of everything I have going on. You better get that angle a little higher if we want him to believe that we're losing any weight here. Because uh, that ain't the angle, Chief. You got to get way higher than that. Hi, Doctor Now. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So what's going on with you? Um, I think that I'm doing okay, except I'm still drinking pop here and there. Well, that's not acceptable. If you want to change your life, you're going to have to stick with the diet. Don't be wishy-washy about it. If you wishy-washy about it, stay where you are. Don't come to Houston. Drinking your calories, in my opinion at least, is the worst thing you can do. I don't drink anything with calories ever anymore. Just like, maybe like five calories my Gatorade Zero has or whatever, but you know what I mean. Try to avoid calories in your liquids, and then you can eat a little bit better, more healthy diet. You'll drop weight probably pretty quick, because all I used to drink was soda. Yeah. Because you're playing games with me isn't going to work, but if you're serious about it, change your life and stick with it okay i want to but it's just been hard because me and my husband separated after we left your office uh he doesn't want to move to texas so he put me in a little bit of a financial issue but um i'm trying what financial issue i didn't was he working i don't think so he was there all the damn time there's no way he was making any kind of money or anything, unless he was slinging something on the side besides whatever to other women. Well, that's like you should. They need to decide what the best course of action and option is best for you. Well, I, uh, my best option would be to come to Houston. That's my, I mean, it's my last option. It's my only option to change my life. <laughs> but you're doing nothing to make that happen. Just give me excuses, okay? So, what you can do to make that happen? Stop drinking soda. Stop giving googly eyes to... Come on, lady. You know how to diet. You've probably read Dr. Now's diet at least a couple times at this point. It's just hard to change that mindset that you have where you just don't give a damn and you, like, could care less to try to lose weight into that mindset where you're going to make yourself a better you it's really hard to get that through your head because you're so used to just being self-destructive at this point i'm trying really hard to find a place but you're not losing weight if you don't change that there is no point in coming here you get that okay so this is what we can do we'll set up for you to get away in someone local and I'm gonna give you two months to lose a hundred pounds. Got it? I got it. Oh. I think it would be hilarious if she turned the phone, he saw that ashtray, because he'd lose his ever loving mind. You're not allowed to smoke and be in a bariatric program. I hope so, because so far things are not looking good for you. But you can do this if you want. Okay. Alright, Angie. Can you do anything? Just call us, okay? Alright, thanks. Okay. Alright. Bye. Bye. Actually, when my surgeon found out I was smoking, I cussed him out and stormed out. And then I called him back like 30 minutes later, apologized. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was just, you know, a little heated. I've been trying to get this going. And now you're telling me I got to wait two months cigarette free. So I, I, if you can do it the wrong way, I did it. So trust me, I know what the hell I'm talking about. I crashed and burned so many times. I don't think Dr. Now understands everything I have to deal with right now and how hard it is. I think doubling my goal is just punishment because I missed my appointment.
if I lose 50 pounds, then that should be more than enough to get weight loss surgery. And if I could just lose all this weight, I wouldn't need his help. Now, would I? But I have to do what he says if I want weight loss surgery. <laughs> so I'll stick to it to make sure I hit his goal. So he'll say he's wrong at my next weigh-in. And the only thing he should have to say then is I was wrong, Angie, and good job. Damn, the entitlement this woman feels. She feels like she deserves everything and she shouldn't have to work for it. 50 pounds, doctor now usually doesn't go for that little of an amount. That's why he's telling you 100 in two months. It's going to show you're dedicated and you're not just going to start eating again. My surgeon wanted me under the 550. I think he did mine at like 540. So I didn't have to lose too much before the surgery. I only lost 65 like the right way. And I did that in a matter of two months after up and down, up and down. So she should pretty easily be able to hit that with his diet. To me, that diet seems crazy strict. But it, it'll work if you can stick to it. And she's definitely at a point where she needs to stick to it. The past few weeks, things haven't gotten any easier. Ready? Mm-hmm. She has uh, band-aids and stuff. I'm still working on doing what I need, but I had to take a break from my exercises because I got an infection in my groin area, and it's extremely painful. And it makes it hard to get around and walk as much as Dr. Now wants me to walk. Oh, no. We're playing Pirates of the Coochie Reek and the Kurtz, like Cursed Clam. Does she have a cigarette? No, she don't have a cigarette in her hand. Also, why is this lady going out down here staring into the abyss? It'll start staring back eventually. Just reach down there, do what you gotta do. Don't get that close. But Desiree has been taking care of me and helping me tend to that, so it doesn't get any worse. I think it looks really good. There's new skin forming. Oh, thank God. Because I know I can't afford to let anything serious happen to me with how bad my body is now. One, one band-aid's probably going to be a little more ideal right now. There you go. Okay. Yep. You can put a band-aid over that thing? The more you know. Wow, this is like, for a guy, this is pretty, like, educational. The only good thing that's happened to me at all is that Justin came back and moved back in with us. He asked me to take him back, and he said he'd be willing to go to Houston with me. So I told him I'd take him back, but that I had serious trust issues still. Hold on a second. Justin's back, so he could have went into your jiggly bits right here, and you still made Desiree do it? Why? Why make your... Would you rather your husband do it? I'm sure he's been down there before, but your daughter, I don't know if you, she actually, she did say at the beginning she wouldn't want her husband to do any kind of caretaker stuff. That seems dumb to me. But now Desiree says if he goes, she's not because she doesn't think I should take him back or that I should trust him. Justin ended up having a downfall, so he left, but he came back. You can't wrong a person for loving somebody. So I still support her, but I'm not going to trust him anymore. To me, he... Damn, this is the Reese's roller coaster of emotions here. We're going up and down. People are leaving. Is this 90 day fiance or 60 days in? He or 600 pound weight. He off, basically. <laughs> well, I love my wife and I want to go to Texas with her. And I want to see her get better so she can have a life and we can have a life together. Yeah. Oh, man, I thought he was about to straddle her and pop that band-aid for a second. I, the way he was going in there, it looked like this was about to turn into a whole other website, not YouTube. We were going to have to switch sites. How you been? I'm all right. Well, as we discussed, trusting you is going to be a process. I don't know. Addiction is hard, I know. I mean, I'm a recovering addict, so it's just, hopefully he's learned. He says he's learning. It is hard. I feel for anybody who's going through some form of addiction, it's not a good place to be. Food addict, whatever other kind of addict, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to you. Hopefully you're able to beat that. You're tougher than you realize, and so many people just fall down that slide, and they don't think there's any way they could climb back up. You can. You just, you, the only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. I still love that saying. 
So you're aware if you leave or you don't follow through with the things that you said you will, we are getting a divorce. Yes, I do. Like, divorced. Done. Yeah. No more chances. This is it. I'm ready to do this. I'm from the show me state, so you have to show me better than you can tell me anyways. She's thrown around the divorce word like five times. Told him he didn't mean a damn thing. Kicked him out. Brought him back. Now she's going to Texas with him, where she'll probably kick him out in Houston, which I imagine is a lot hotter than Ohio. That would be a lot less or more miserable, I mean. This is, wow, this is just a freaking crazy dating thing right here. We might be on Cheaters. I don't know what show we're watching. I think it's going to be a good new start for both of us in another chapter. And I think it's even going to be better because he's going to have drug dealers there that he knows. So put some time under his belt for sobriety and we both get well. But if he's relapsing at all, I have to be extra careful to not let that influence me. Because with my history with drugs, I can't let myself fall back into any of those habits. Love you. Two addicts usually doesn't work. One will typically influence the other to slide back down that same slippery slope. So this one, I couldn't see ending well. And typically in a relationship, if one person's on that kind of path, the other person is kind of like following or maybe they got sucked into it too. It's terrible when you see a couple going through it because they tend to fight more like physical or emotionally hurt each other like it gets bad so i don't see this one ending well at all i want to be healthy i want to live longer i don't want to be a failure i want to succeed in doing this so i'll make sure not to lose my focus or let him slip me up at all because i can't lose this chance better fight like your life depends on it then because it really does doctor now is sending me to a local clinic to get my weight checked and then i'm supposed to call him and let him know how much i lost my plan it's kind of funny that she lost the hubcap right by where she's sitting maybe just the shocks couldn't take that kind of shock is to show doctor now that he's wrong and i'm making progress and then get approved for weight loss surgery and then we're all moving everything down to Houston. Desiree's refusing to do much of anything as long as Justin's around, which is fine by me because I don't want her boyfriend around anyway. But my best friend, mandy has been in town for about a week now helping out. Why do you guys hate each other's men so much? Do you just have a hatred of men from what's happened to you in the past? Because I would think your daughter... I guess, I mean, she just wants her mom around, but you would think there'd be some form of hatred from her being in and out of jail her whole childhood. Dr. Now gave me a bigger weight loss goal on my last call with him that he wanted me to hit, which I think was just punishment from him for missing my appointment. It's been six months, so at this point, there's no way she's lost nearly enough for him to be satisfied, but we'll see where she's at. He doesn't know what he's talking about when he says, I'm just making excuses. So as long as I hit the first goal of losing 50 pounds, I think I'm good. And if I did that, I'd be 593. And I'm pretty sure I did that. You good? I'm good. I'm clear. Why is she saying 593 when it says weight target 5... Oh, she said she only needed to lose 50, and he said 100. She just don't give a damn what anybody says, right? I'm not even off this thing. She's <sighs> under six. Do you need some water, Angie? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm only 45 pounds. But that's close. Don't beat yourself up for that. Are you ready to call Dr. Now and let him know what your weight was? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Angie, how you doing? I'm all right. All right, so um, did you check your weight? Yes. And how much you weight now? I'm down to 598.6, and I'm proud. 
45 pounds is still a loss. It's better than we'll see sometimes, but it's been six months for her. You would think with a camera crew around, everyone watching you, all this pressure and everything, she would perform a little bit better, but I guess it was just rough for her. What was that? So it looked like you almost lost 50 pounds, huh? Yes. All right, that's a little progress. But are you supposed to lose 100 pounds in two months? And on top of that, it's been five months since you were here. So at this point, you haven't shown me you're taking this seriously as you need. And I'm not about proving you for anything today. Well, since you lost 50 pounds, we give you another chance to stick with your diet and uh, try to lose another 50 pounds. She's from the show me state. You gotta show me. Also, what the hell is that tattoo on her arm? Is that a gummy bear? Okay. Okay. Alright, uh, Angie, you look like um, you're a little bit under the influence of a drug. Are, are you taking any medicine? Because you don't sound very normal. I don't sound what? You don't sound normal. Are you taking any new medication or anything else I should know about? Am I taking medicine? <laughs> he said, you're stoned on Stouffer's lady. He caught you. He's got you now. You're right where he wants you. Yeah, are you taking any drugs or anything? No. Okay. Well, something is going on with you. Okay. But regarding your weight, you need to be more proactive and you need to follow a better diet before we uh, bring you to Houston, okay? Okay, well, it's gonna be okay. important. Uh, my uh, U-Haul is leaving tomorrow. And let me remind you, because maybe you forgot, your weight loss was 50 pounds in one month, not 100 pounds ever. Did you say that to me? Yeah, but hasn't it been two months? And your U-Haul can pull out the same way it pulls back in, sweetheart. You better lose the damn attitude. This man's trying to help you, and you're being such a freaking bitch, man. I can't... She's had trauma, but she... No reason to be this nasty. Me? I definitely did. On my call with you two months ago, that was the goal I gave you. So either you forgot or you're too high on something to remember. But it's going on six months since we saw you. And this level of weight loss is unacceptable over that time. Losing less than 10 pounds a month is not going to be enough to save your life. Okay. Well, if you expected me to lose 50 pounds every month for six months, I wouldn't need you. What you seem to need is a calculator. Because losing 50 pounds a month for six months would have been weight loss going off 300 pounds. And that's not... Uh, I know a lot of people are like, if you can do it on your own, why do you need the surgery? Think about it. When's the last time you started a diet that you didn't quit within like a month? And then look at us up at around 600, knowing that we're going to have to diet for like three years in order to get where we need to be. Cut out my damn stomach. I don't care. Take other stuff if you need to. I might even... No, I'm not going to say that. I might give you something else, but I'm not going to... No, take the damn stomach. What I asked you to do. But I didn't give you a goal of 100 pounds in two months since you wasted the first three months and you didn't even do that. So you can either give me more attitude or figure out whether you want to do this or not. Because if you don't, you're not going to be alive for much longer. Okay. Um, if you're expecting me to come there and sit around and wait for surgery for another month, I'm not coming. I don't have time for that. Heaven forbid we waste any of your time while you... I think Whataburger has Wi-Fi if you're really trying to wait that long. I mean, you better get your ass there. Dr. Now is a very busy man. This guy's a saint. Waste hours with your lies and games. And you decide if you want to do this or not. But if you do, then I will give you two more months to lose 100 pounds. And this time I suggest you write it down so you remember that. Otherwise, just stay up there and do whatever you want. And you don't need to come back down here. Well, I'm trying to do this to come down there, but it costs money to move. Money, yeah. No shit, Sherlock. It also costs money to be high as a kite, but you're there somehow, so you got it somewhere. Yeah, I didn't have it. And since you're making accusations of what's wrong with me, I'm sick. I puked on myself, slept all day yesterday. I'm ill. I don't take anything but what's prescribed to me. So please don't make accusations, okay? I'm a doctor, Angie. I know the difference between sick and high. 
And if you decide to continue and come back down here, I'm going to run toxicology on you to make sure there is nothing in your system that shouldn't be there. So you can... Uh-oh. Women lie, men lie, blood don't lie. If you are on something, you better pump that out of your system real quick. That or buy yourself some fake pee, and I think Dr. Now could sight, like, kind of see that coming. No, it would be blood, right? Why am I talking about fake pee? I don't think you can get fake blood. Need to clean up your act right now, or we don't need to bother playing any more games with you. So when you decide, you just let us know your plan, okay? Um, my plan is to go home and go to bed. What's yours? Well, my plan right now is to end this conversation. So you have a good day, indeed. If you decide you want to try to live instead of killing yourself, hit your goal. Other than that, I wish you well. Goodbye. Alright, bye. I love so much when Dr. Now is a smartass. Like, something about that man telling people off, I just really enjoy it. Today I'm getting ready to hopefully move into my new apartment. Ah. We're going back because they say they have a better unit we could take that's bigger. And they also said they were able to widen the door. So I'm hoping that's accurate. I have no idea what will happen if they don't have a unit that will work for me. I don't know what the next step is yet. That U-Haul pulls out the same way it pulls in. Again, I'll say that. Because if the bathroom isn't bigger, then we may have no choice but to just head back to Ohio. Because I can't just go out and find a new place. I've left a lot behind to come here. So I'm just hoping this unit works because I'm tired and I just want this all to be over with. Okay. I was reading his shirt. I get enough exercise pushing my luck. I guess you will with her. This lady will rip your arm off and eat it. So. Do you want to use your marker to take this step or right here? Uh, if I fall going in here, I'm going to be so pissed. I mean, we can, they can put a ramp in. We'll okay. get a ramp in if we need to. Well, let's do this. Let's, if, let's see if you can. I'm pretty sure Houston has one of those tarps like they carried you out with in Ohio. They'll get you up eventually. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm afraid of this. Amanda, can you just be behind me and, like, push me here or something? I got you. Okay. One, two. Oh, oh. I got you. Oh, my hands are shaking, though. Give me my walker. Oh, sorry, baby. I was just gonna walk it forward, so... It smells like lemon in here. Somebody just cleaned. It smells good. Yeah. Mandy, do you have the wheelchair right? The crazy thing about, like, fear of them little, like... You, you'll come up to a curb, you'll step-step, like you're afraid to just one-leg it. I really think I could have, but, like, the fear of falling? Pretty damn scary, to be honest. You just don't want to end up on the ground because you're not sure if you can get back up. I always could, but I mean, it it hurts get, being on the hard ground like that at you're that at that size. Yeah, I got it. So when I have a meltdown in here a little bit, we can um we can do that together. <laughs> oh, the bedroom is huge. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, no, he's not in here. Let me see if we met him. He's dead. Yeah. Um. Kind of tell me shit around. Why wouldn't I show you? Oh shit, that door ain't equipped for a 300 pounder, let alone a 6. What are we gonna do here, man? This is dangerous. They're gonna have to get her like a potty chair or something. She can't get into the bathroom. We're gonna have to start taking hooker baths with a bucket and everything. Okay, hold on, I can't. Hold on, let me see. He's too, it's too hot for all this crap. He's going to cut right here across and all the way down. <laughs> That's okay. enough to get your walker through. Okay. Um, great. It's perfect. It's home. I'm home. Thank God. All right. I'm getting ready. Let me start moving stuff in and let this man get to work. To All right. Well, then I'm cool with cool. that. Let's go. Can she do the electric slide to, like, the bathroom? How is she going to get through the door in the time until they widen it? I would think she's in a pretty bad spot right here, at least. So now I just want to get moved in because I have my appointment with Dr. Now in a few weeks. And I should be getting approved for weight loss surgery then because I know I'm going to have the progress I need. I've lost the 50 pounds he asked me to lose already. So we should be moving on to some medical. Oh, shit. The wishful thinking and the entitlement. 50 pounds a month. 
you crazy oh my god what is wrong with this woman she thinks she's gonna bully him into doing what she wants it ain't gonna go that way i never see it playing out like that doctor now don't play that kind of stuff so i've been getting ready to do the surgery i'm not worried i mean i did what i was supposed to do so if he tries to run me around and give me more goals and avoid giving me what I deserve then, and then I'm then I'm really going to f*** out. But until then, I'm pushing myself to make as much progress as I can because I didn't move down here just to sit around waiting to die. I haven't seen Dr. Now run anyone around, speed walking, or just walking in general anyone around. A lot of the patients come here can't even walk or in the worst state they've ever been in. And then, you know, two years down the line are thanking Dr. Now for their new life, everything he's given them. You are doing everything to fight people helping you and just to make them pay for all the trauma in your past. I know you've got your guard up because you're just used to being let down. And at least I feel that's how she is acting. But at some point, you're going to have to let all that tough lady persona down. You're going to have to get a little more vulnerable, listen to the doctor and do what the hell he says. And I'm looking forward to showing him I'm still doing well. And I've been staying on the diet, so I know I lost a lot. So his accusations towards me have been completely unfair. She does not look 100 pounds lighter. Damn, maybe she took a diuretic or something. She would have to do something. She could take some X-lax and drop probably 10. So at this point, we're in a bad state. We need to we need to do something. So he expects me to be below 498 today. But if I could easily lose 100 pounds on my own, I wouldn't have any need for him or surgery. Justin's always got them little smart ass one line shirts that he got from like the Walmart rack for like three or four bucks. So I don't know, man. I don't think she's lost nearly enough weight at all. So it doesn't matter to me what the scale says because I know how hard I'm working and that I've already lost enough to prove I'm ready for surgery. Oh shit. She's done a hell of a lot of nothing. The hostess humper. Oh my god. What are you doing, woman? Well, I'm still making progress. I think that total is actually a lot higher. And that the scale is messed up. But the bottom line is I'm still losing. Damn right. We need to bring in our chubby tuning fork and make sure that thing's calibrated. Ain't that right? It seems to be off for a lot of people. You're not the only one. So this seems to be happening more and more recently. I've seen it a lot lately. So there's really no reason for Dr. Now to tell me I'm not ready for weight loss surgery. Other than he likes getting people to jump through hoops. And that's what I'm starting to wonder. What hoop are we fitting through, woman? They don't make hoops big enough. I've never hula hooped in my damn life. So if you can find one, I'd love to friggin' learn eventually. So if he doesn't approve me today, then I'm gonna know. That's what he likes. But I'm not gonna let him get away with that with me. Dr. Now is not the almighty God. I refuse to be weak. So, I'm gonna stand up to him. This guy has a string holding up his pants. Like he's taken out a short string and tied them up. That's redneck ingenuity at its best. And someone also asked, you, asked why they always send them to room 5. I think that's just the room they have cameras set up in, and that's why they always do that. In the past two months, you lost almost nothing. Just 9 pounds. So, you want to explain to me why that is? I'm going through a lot of changes right now. Bear with that. Okay. Except for weight changes, and that's what we need to do to say you're like 40 at this point. It's not going to get easier going forward. You done with your little tantrum and finish talking? Sure. All right. At your current rate, you're going to be dead in a year or less. Unless you make the changes you need. So you can give me every excuse and justification you want. It's not going to change that. But maybe you think you I knew a guy who died in his 50s named Big Johnny is what everybody called him. He was somewhere in the high 600s. And he used to lecture me about my weight a long time ago. 
I didn't really like stopping by his house though because his daughter always tried to jump me. I don't know if she had a thing for fat guys, but it, it, it's a sad way to go. That's for sure. You can argue your way out of debt. But as you seem to think that's a solution to everything. I'm not arguing. I'm just frustrated and I'm angry, as you can see. You can tell yourself that, but this is behavior problem. Yeah. It's not anger. Yeah, I have a behavior problem. Try to convince yourself it is an emotional issue that is justified. You like to act like the whole world is unfair and you don't deserve your situation. So you want to... The world's not fair. It's not fair to anyone. It'll chew you up, spit you out. You learned that very early on, and I'm sorry you went through all that. But at some point, you have to surrender to the program. You're going to have to work with it. To give me attitude and act like this is unfair. Go right ahead. But the only person you're going to hurt is yourself. And that's what you're doing right now. Because you have had eight months at this point. And you still haven't shown me enough to convince me that you're ready to do the program. But since you're down here in Houston, it's always going to be hard to get into the program, but at this point, you signed up, you're on a TV show, you took the $1,500 paycheck to be on it, the $1,500 shower sh scene to show every single bit of your goods, so you kind of just have to roll with it. I'll give you one more chance. I should have never came here. <laughs> well, then why are you here? Why do you even want to do this? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So that's a good question. All right, well, you think it's over, and once again, decide what you want to do. Again. You have to find what drives you, which going to make you want to change your lifestyle. I've talked to some people just through this YouTube channel that are up around where I used to be in weight, and they just seem so, like, bat down on themselves and just hopeless. And I remember being there, so you just kind of got to believe in yourself that there is an opportunity for you moving forward, and you could change everything if you just want to. Since you're here in Houston, I will give you another chance. But you're going to need to lose 100 pounds over the next two months. You do that, then we'll start you in the program and discuss next steps. But I also told you I want to do a blood test. So we'll draw some blood really quick, and then we'll be done. We're here to help you out and give you guidance to go in the right direction. She's out right now, just based off of nicotine. They're going to see that in her blood. They're going to be pissed about that. There's no way they can't smell the cigarettes. That's what eventually got me caught. I smoked before I walked into the surgeon, which was stupid, but I didn't even know at that point they could cancel you for nicotine. So you might want to consider listening to us, okay? All right, see you all later. See you later. Okay. I think this is ridiculous, and all of this is completely unfair. I've been disrespected I don't know how many times at this point. I've been told I'm making excuses when I'm not. I've been asked... Damn, where'd the Tata telephone come, phone come from? Did We didn't pull that out during weigh-in? Oh, my God, that's an extra 0.8 pounds. Don't you know that? I figured that out holding that thing in the morning on the scale offensively if I'm on anything, like drugs. And it defies all logic and makes no sense whatsoever to have to lose even more at this point. To get a surgery that I need to even lose the weight. So I'll play this little game for a little longer. But at this point, all of this has been total bull What game are we playing? This is your life, only you can change it. I think you're the only one that's playing, like, whatever. God, Jumanji with the junk. Like, I, come on, lady. Let's get serious here. Once again, I'm back to doing the diet on my own without surgery, which is frustrating, but I'm still doing it. Dr. Now. Everyone thinks, like, the surgery's the answer. It's just the start to the, like, answer. You still gotta work on yourself says he's still not convinced I'm ready for surgery when I am. So I guess my only option is to try and lose more weight. Um, I actually consider going back to Ohio. I mean, it's still a consideration. What the hell is in Ohio? Did we keep the house somehow? Or is that where her daughter's living now? I, I don't understand. Dr. Now says if I stick to his diet completely, I'll lose the weight he wants me to lose. But I already was. And what I lost wasn't enough for him. 
So the only thing I could think of to do better is to barely eat and only eat salads and starve myself. So if I don't get approved this next time, that will mean Dr. Now is giving me a death sentence. If you do a starve yourself diet, it's also going to have a negative effect because you're going to have to find a way to be full and like content. Maybe just drink a lot more protein shakes when you're hungry or something like that. I found drinking more water seemed to be the answer to the diet. And when I'm hungry and stuff like that, like I'm starving right now. I need to chug some water. Because without surgery, I'm not going to survive for long. And if Dr. Now can live with that on his conscience, then he's not who I thought he was. And I don't deserve this abuse. That's a pretty pointed word. Also, there's probably too much mayonnaise in that. Maybe mustard in your tuna instead. But that's pretty extreme. I'm going to guess she's already pushing 600 calories just this meal. So I don't think she's taking this whole 1200 thing that serious. At least 600 probably, probably closer to eight with all that mayo and all the extra add-ons and dressing and stuff like that. Me, Justin, and Mandy are headed back to Dr. Now's. He called and said he wanted me to come back in. And I'm guessing it's not good news if he wants to. Uh oh, he don't call anybody back in just to catch up or anything like that. Something's going down here. Me to come back early because it's only been like a little over two weeks since my last appointment with them. So I'm a little nervous. I should have quit smoking when he told me to, and I wish I would have listened, and I wish it was that easy, but it's not. And I'm an addict. I'm an ex-drug addict, and addiction is hard for me, so. Just because you've struggled with something in the past don't mean you have to identify yourself that way. I know a lot of people struggle with that and they label themselves that forever. I'm not a big fan of that. I think people can get past that and just stop labeling themselves that way and see like a better side of themselves. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's crazy. This is the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole entire life. <laughs> Shots at you, Justin. And so it wouldn't be fair for Dr. Now to tell me I can't get surgery. So if that happens, it's going to mean I wasted a lot of time and energy on this. So if this chance gets unfairly taken from me, then all of that would have been for nothing. And it's only been two weeks since my last appointment. So I don't understand why I have to get weighed in like this. All of what exactly? Also, I didn't know they still made rock aware jeans or jorts like that. And he's got some Walmart Tims on. This guy is Walmart thugging. And what's her say? Straight out of swap meat? I don't know. Again. I see your phone. I don't know why I'm here earlier, but I'm worried. It's not going to be good. It's only been two weeks. And I was down to 589, and I'm probably only a little less than that because I haven't been given hardly any time to lose more. Oh shit, we gained five. It could have been just four if she got rid of the telephone. They literally tell you to empty your pockets and everything. Not to just, like, take all that stuff to the scape. Fuck me, Fupa. Okay. I think that weight is flat out wrong because I haven't cheated. I'm practically starving myself to death, so there's no way I could have gained. And I'm confused how that happened. Like, I'm really you know, emotionally distraught because five pounds is a big deal now. And if Dr. Now this sounds like listening to Tess Holiday tell us that she don't know how she got that big. Now just plans to punish me more and accuse me of things. And that's not going to be fair at all. I don't think he's even accusing you. I think he's got pretty good proof at this point if they've taken your blood and seen you gain five pounds. What are y'all doing? I don't know. I'm a mess. <laughs> Things have just been hard. And I want to know why I'm here. So I'm just waiting to hear what you have to say. Okay, well, I think you know why you're here. First, you haven't shown much effort up to this point. Even now, you're not on track, because in the two weeks since I saw you, if you were doing the diet, you would have lost at least 25 pounds. I feel like most surgeons will give you the benefit of a doubt as long as you try and are showing effort, even if you're screwing up at the start. 
Like, they want you to succeed. I want them to succeed. I don't like seeing people crash and burn, even if they're nasty and mean-spirited like she's been half of the show. Instead, you gain five pounds in that time. So you're still not making progress. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. <sighs> don't give me your tears, because in almost nine months, we've given you every chance to do this, but then you're just giving me attitude. I'm not making any excuses. I have nothing, but I do have something to go clean about. <laughs> You know, I already know what you're going to tell me. And no point in coming clean once your ass been caught with the uncalibrated scale and all that. Like, jigs up, lady. They found out that you've been eating all the junk food under the sun. You just gained five pounds in two weeks. You're supposed to be on a diet that would make you lose 25. That's why I called you early, because we got your toxicology back. Am I right? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, don't play this game where you're going to be honest with me now. The time to do that has passed because you have been keeping a number of things from me that are effective. I would like to know what her A1C level is from her blood and all that. I'm sure they tested that too. Mine was a 4.1 last time I checked it. I think you know significantly. To start, we can see that you're a heavy smoker and you've been hiding that from me. I didn't tell you that because I quit. Then I get on the road and I freak out and I just... And what did that mean? You freak out and you smoke? For a lot of smokers, it's a stress thing, so I don't think she's lying about that. That alone, in your condition, is causing severe damage to your pulmonary system and causing other health issues for you, too, that are all decreasing your lifespan right now. And that's not the biggest issue, because we also found narcotics. But you know that already, didn't you? I know. Um, we found fudge in your blood, lady. The jig is up. There's Nestle in those nooks. I have marijuana in my system. Don't play games with me. I know exactly what you have in your system. And it's not just that. There are more. We found you're on the McDonald's, the Burger King, the Taco Bell. You're on all the smack, lady. Multiple other narcotics we found. So don't think you can do this, come in clean game and deny the rest. So this is an extremely serious situation. You can't play games to get out of. But you were never going to be able to hide this from me. We would have found all this if you were getting surgery. So what made you think you could get away with this? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. This is a... I, it seems to be a thing that she cries every time she's caught in some kind of lie. Like she thinks it'll get her out of trouble or something like that. I don't know. It's just kind of crazy to me. Severe issue that we need to address because this is going to be what kills you the quickest if we don't. But your weight is not going to take too much longer to kill you either. But you can't keep living like you are, making these choices to destroy your health in every possible way. So this is what's going to happen from here and what your options are. First, weight loss surgery right now is off the table. So I, then I don't know what I'm doing then. They are probably going to stop doing donuts, or maybe Justin could start doing them, burn some calories. I don't know. We're going to have to figure this out somehow. I don't know what I'm doing then. I'll tell you what you can do. If you want the chance to do this and continue on, then you need to start by going to rehab. And if you agree to that, we'll set that up for you. Okay. But if you don't do that, then there is nothing more to discuss with you. So. She's not going to do that. She was already talking about, like, high, like double timing it back to Ohio when things got tough. I don't see her going for this at all. So that's your only choice. You either do that or we're done. You got it? Can I have time to think about it? Sure, but you don't have a lot of time, so I'll give you 24 hours. But we're not going to play any more games and just watch you do the same thing over and over until you die. So you need to decide to do this, or there is nothing more we can do for you. But the priority is that we address your substance abuse. Okay. Then after that, we'll continue to address your weight loss and smoking. But at this point, any one of those issues is going to lead to your death right now. So your situation isn't good, and you don't have any time to waste. I mean, I... I feel like you can only tell so many people, people that so many times, I mean until like it's just in one ear out the other she has to know she's not in a good way she knows that she lays in bed needs a walker is like 
smoking probably a cart in a week if she's smoking a heavy smoker, he said. I kind of feel like I did a first step because this coming here was a, a huge step. Well, and that step is different step. Just because you can come down here doesn't give you a pass to do these things. No. So don't argue that. Okay. So if you want to do something right for yourself, you're going to have to be responsible for your behavior. And to do that, your next step is rehab. That's your only option. Okay. So I feel like a lot of people just jump on the let's get to Texas, he'll have to take me route. It just never ends up working out that well. So let me know what you decide, okay? Okay. All right, I'll wait to hear from you. But don't take too long. You have 24 hours, so let me know. You're on TikTok tiramisu time. What's it going to be? Is she going to actually keep going? Or is she just done at this point? I don't even know what to say because I've never been mistreated like this in my whole life. It's extremely offensive and utterly unfair. I don't care what any of the reports say. Dr. Now is wrong. And Shut up, lady. You can get porked by the Pillsbury Doughboy. How, why would you lie when he's got all the evidence? Like, he knows what's up. And at this point, I feel like I've been nice. And I lost weight. A lot of weight. And I don't need to put up with this anymore. So I'm done. My life was depending on this. But that didn't seem to matter much to them. Not really, but does this guy have a firecracker in his back pocket? Because it looks like a fuse hanging out of his pocket. Doctor now. So I think it's time for me to just go back to Ohio. Because at this point, unless Doctor now apologize for all his accusations, then I don't see how I can work with him. But I didn't lower myself to respond to any of the heinous things that Dr. Now said to me at any point. Because my heart is in Ohio. What's that? I forget. I know, it's like an emo boy song or something. So, I'm proud of myself for that. I worked hard and deserved to get surgery. And the reason I lost it in the end, I stood up for myself. So I'm going to take that with me back to Ohio. And I still have my pride in the end. When exactly did she stand up for anything? Oh, God. Well, there you go. She sucks. Uh, well, I guess that's the end of it. It's just going to be a Doctor Now epilogue for the last one minute or whatever. So... I feel like we've got the gist of Angie. I know there's a where are they now on her, so I'll have to do that one, upload that in the next couple days. But man, this lady is mean, nasty. She's every kind of messed up that I've seen on this show. And it's probably from her childhood or messed up past, her first kid at 13. Shit, 13, I was running around, sneaking around, trying to play a Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments without anybody catching me and knowing I was a closet nerd. Like, I was trying to protect my image at all costs, but, I mean, it's sad, it's terrible, I feel bad for the grandkids, the daughter, everyone, and she's in and out of jail, everything. Hopefully she can get her act together, because it's never too late to turn your life around and start working towards something positive. So, I mean, I hope for better for Angie, hopefully she'll do better in the next episode, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're new here, and, uh... We'll see you in the next one. All right. Bye, guys.